Citigroup raised its 2024 gold estimate to 23.50 an ounce and made a massive 40% upward revision to its 25. 2025 forecast to 2875, it said in a note. That came after Goldman Sachs Group said Friday that metal was in an unshakable bull market, raising its year-end prediction to $2,700. So the banks are coming around a little bit late. It's going to be a lot worse than that. It's that we're going to head past 2875. I think we're going to hit $3,000 this year and past it. Um, but, you know, I've been wrong on timing before. I'm not so great on timing, but I know what is going on fundamentally and logically. Gold prices surged to another record high on Wednesday, following remarks by Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, who emphasized that recent job gains and higher-than-expected inflation readings do not significantly alter the economic policy outlook for the year. Powell's comments signaled the Fed's reluctance to lower interest rates in the near future, prompting gold to edge higher as traders absorbed his statements. Despite expectations for a rate cut at the Fed's upcoming policy meeting in June, Powell's indication that interest rates will remain steady in the short term buoyed gold prices. Higher interest rates are traditionally associated with lower gold and silver prices, but this correlation did not hold. While Powell's remarks did not unveil any new insights, they effectively ruled out the possibility of a rate cut in May and made a June cut increasingly unlikely. Renowned analyst Rafi Farber, notes that lower interest rates typically benefit gold since it does not yield interest. However, he argues that in an environment where significant debt underpins the economy, rate hikes can devalue currency and strengthen gold and silver. As a result of sustained high prices, financial institutions like Citigroup and Goldman Sachs have revised their gold price forecasts upwards, with Citigroup predicting $2,350 per ounce by 2024 and Goldman Sachs anticipating $2,700 by year-end. Rafi Farber suggests these estimates may still be conservative, projecting gold to reach $3,000 this year. Turning to the gold-silver ratio, which historically hovered around 20 to 1 in the 1960s and early 1970s, Rafi suggests a shift in favor of silver during the final phase of this bull market. He anticipates silver potentially outpacing gold, reaching a ratio of 15 to 1. This shift could be driven by increased public awareness of economic dynamics and the affordability of silver relative to gold, prompting more investors to turn to silver as an alternative. We will present clips from Rafi Farber's interview with Arcadia Economics. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. Gold edges higher after Powell signals no rush to cut rates. Well. That's odd because the mainstream media always says that uh, higher rates or rates higher than would otherwise be, for example, when the Fed doesn't want to cut, that should lead gold to go lower and silver to go lower, but uh, not here. And they don't really uh, address that point. So it says Bloomberg here, gold edged higher as traders digested. Jerome Powell's comments signaling that the Federal Reserve has no plans to lower interest rates in the near term. For gold traders, Powell's remarks didn't break much new ground. Although his comments suggested it may a great cut is off the table and June is increasingly unlikely. Swap markets show the Fed will only begin easing in September after indicating a July, indicating July a week ago. Here's the key sentence. Lower rates are generally positive for gold as it pays no interest. Well, they can't even say or address the, the, the issue that the Fed is saying that they're not going to cut rates and gold heads higher anyway. The truth is when the currency is backed by so much debt, I think about 93% of the, of the dollar is backed by either treasury debt or mortgage-backed security debt. When you raise rates in that environment, 93% of the backing of the dollar gets cut in price and the Fed has losses and that destroys the purchasing power of the currency. In this environment, the higher rates go, the lower the dollar goes and the higher gold and silver go, but they don't address that. They can't even say it. We're wondering when silver is going to finally overtake gold. So we, uh, I've shown this from the 1970s. I've shown gold versus silver in the 1970s. So this is the gold to silver ratio in the 1970s. So from uh, about 1973, right? 1973 to 1979, right? Gold to silver ratio was stuck in a range of, well, let's say around 40, a little bit below 40, 39, 38, whatever that is. And when did it finally head towards 15 to 1 in the 1980 top? Well, that was beginning in 1979. We're about 40 here, uh, and we head to about 15 in 1980. So in the final year of the 1970s rally, that is when silver overtook gold. And that's what I think is going to happen now. In the final year of this bull market, which uh, I think we're either in or very, very close to, 
Uh, silver is going to overtake gold pretty quickly, and we're going to head near 2015 to 1. And the last chart I want to show you will confirm this. Uh, this is the chart of silver in the 19 in 1970, just before the gold window was closed by Richard Nixon. May his memory be for a Nixon. I put a red line here where the average price of silver is in 1970. I eyeballed it, whatever. Uh, so let's say about 180. So in 1970, we know that gold was $35 an ounce. And 180, if you take that, it's about a 20 to 1 gold to silver ratio. So in the 60s, the 1970, 1971, gold to silver ratio was about 20 to 1. So that's so people who say that a 15 to 1 ratio is unachievable, no, no. It's pretty normal, and we will get there when the public figures out what is going on and they can't afford gold, so they head into silver. Right now, the banks are chasing gold, which is why gold is heading higher. And silver is heading higher too, but not really that fast because the public hasn't woken up yet. But when they do, the power of the public is a lot more powerful than the power of even the mega banks because there's like 6 billion people in the world and there's only like, I don't know, a handful of mega banks. And they don't really have that much money. They're bleeding and they're failing. And you know, Yes, we are headed to a 20 to 1, 15 to 1 ratio, which is why I'm a silver stagger. It's going to be a lot more volatile than gold, which is why I also hold gold. Uh, and we've seen what happens when there is panic of a possible World War III end game scenario. Gold and silver go up, Bitcoin goes down. Will that happen in the actual end game? I don't know for sure, but it certainly seems that way. Reports from U.S. officials indicate that Israel launched a missile strike on Iran in the early hours of Friday marking a potential retaliation amidst escalating tensions between the two nations. This comes after weeks of back and forth actions and rhetoric between Iran and Israel, raising concerns about the stability of the region. Interestingly, the recent exchange of hostilities between Iran and Israel had a notable impact on financial markets. When Iran fired missiles at Israel, gold prices surged to a staggering $3,000 per ounce, while Bitcoin experienced a sharp 10% drop. This highlights the tendency of investors to seek refuge in traditional safe haven assets like gold during times of geopolitical uncertainty. Renowned analyst Rafi Farber points out an intriguing trend in the gold market. Despite being in a bear market against stocks since 2011, recent signals suggest a potential reversal. A head and shoulders pattern has emerged, signaling a possible shift in investor sentiment toward tangible assets like gold and silver amid ongoing economic volatility. These developments underscore the intricate interplay between geopolitical events and financial markets. Tensions between nations can significantly impact investor behavior and asset prices. As uncertainty looms, investors may increasingly turn to assets like gold as a hedge against geopolitical risk and economic instability. This is on uh, Sunday, Saturday night, actually. I'm using PAXG. That's a cryptocurrency. Not really. It's a, it's a token backed by gold. So uh, let's assume it is backed by gold. Uh, and since the futures markets were not active at this hour, I have to use this chart uh, because you can trade tokens whenever you want, 24-7. So this spike here is the equivalent of $3,000 an ounce uh, for gold. And what was happening here, this is when uh, Iran attacked Israel with 300 whatever missiles of something or other, and uh, the PAXG, the gold token, crypto, whatever it is, was spiking from, what, what was it, 2300 to about 3000 And what was happening to Bitcoin, it was falling about 10%. Uh, and here we have, this just happened, I think, last night. I woke up and I saw this, so I had to uh, update this chart. It happened again. Not as serious because apparently Israel just like dropped a few bombs on Iran or something like that. It wasn't real. It was like a theater thing. I think Zero Hedge called it toothless. And it's not real. It's all everyone has to play their part in this stupid game. I don't even know what game they're playing. Uh, so we see here that, again that gold spiked and Bitcoin fell. Um, so I believe this is a foreshadowing to what will come in the real end game when there's a lot of panic in a real sense. I think uh, the Bitcoin crowd is going to drop everything and sell all at the same time. And people are going to go into real money. And I think that is a necessity from a logical standpoint as well, because from my perspective, Bitcoin is a derivative of the dollar, not in the sense that it's backed by dollars, but it has value because it has dollar value, whereas the dollar has value because it has gold value. So the dollar is a gold derivative, Bitcoin is a dollar derivative, uh, and when the dollar falls, everything above it in the pyramid falls, including Bitcoin, and we have a foreshadowing of that. Could I be real wrong? Yeah, but that's my position. We'll see what happens, and I think we have two foreshadowings of that. On the banking front, we have news from Reuters, UBS. Remember that bank that took over Credit Suisse? 
when Credit Suisse went bust. Uh, that was what, last year or something like that. So UBS, they need another $25 billion bailout. So it says here, UBS added capital needs of 15 to 25 billion are realistic, Swiss minister says. Instead of calling it a bailout, they're calling it capital needs, which is uh, the same thing, but you call it a different name. People don't panic. So estimates that Swiss bank will require another 15 billion, 25 billion in capital under government proposals aimed at making the banking sector more robust, more robust, ro robust, are about right. Switzerland's finance minister was quoted as saying on Tuesday, that's right, robust. Those orders of magnitude are plausible. Swiss finance minister Karen Keller Sutter, that's a lot of hers, was speaking after the Swiss government last week set out proposals to tighten regulation for banks deemed too big to fail particularly UBS, which said the lender would face more stringent capital requirements in the future. So they have stringent capital requirements. And in order to meet those stringent capital requirements, the government will give them $25 billion. And then that's really stringent. Gold is poised to conclude the week with an inside week, establishing price levels that could indicate a potential upward or downward move in the coming week. Despite the mainstream narrative being somewhat confusing, there appears to be an increasing consensus among major financial institutions regarding the bullish outlook for gold. Share your thoughts on Rafi's prediction in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.